there's a lot of people. And then there's a mini in the middle of the road. It's, is it going round it? It's, whoa. I'm actually gonna ping it all the way down and see what it does here. Welcome everybody to Tesla Driver. I hope you're doing very well and welcome back to our UK Autopilot City Tour. Today we're in Salisbury and we had a hard break there. Um, I think it was because of the very like tight angle of the bus lane. Today we're in Salisbury and we're gonna be going all the way straight through Salisbury and then back around it using the ring road. Now, before we get into this, let's have a quick look at the map. So you can see going ahead that we've got basically this kind of straight all the way down. Then it's a little bit of a one way area down here and then going on from there we're going to come all the way back around and wrap up so we're going over a roundabout now but there's no one coming on the other side so that was fine to do uh, same again here the car's just looking it's absolutely fine for it to go straight over but obviously the car there wasn't doing the roundabout it was just lucky enough to follow the line straight over and it be clear now Salisbury does have this weird system that you can see here where it pushes the bus lane or uh, well, the bus lane pushes the road over then the road goes back and back over it's quite a pain and as you can see, the road gets very wide with no markings. So let's see what Autopilot thinks about it. I'm actually gonna bring it to 25 for this bit, just because it's quite tight. Yeah, see it turns left tight, turns right now quite tight. And now I'm assuming it's gonna tuck up between the bus stops. Yeah, it's used the bus stops as lines. And now it's cut back over to the left and it continues going straight over. So yeah, it used a couple of the different lines there um, for obviously for the car to break and for the car to know where to turn to. So. That's the problem. Again, it's the same old story no matter where we are. It's the lines on the road in the UK are currently the big issue. Now, as it gets busier and more hectic, I'm expecting to have to take control quite a bit in this city, if I'm being honest. I've been to Salisbury many times, so I know the roads and I know how, how awful, just like the other UK cities, um, Salisbury is to drive around. Now I'm gonna kind of let the car pick the lane it wants to follow and go in and just kind of go from there. But I'm gonna try and follow this route the best that I can, the best that I've set out. Now I am gonna have to take autopilot off for this roundabout because it's not a normal laned roundabout. I'm gonna have to obviously go around it all myself. And in fact, I am going into this lane because I want to go all the way around. Am I going left here? Oh, I'm actually going left here, so. Just cut over into that lane, shall we, instead? Now, this is going into the center of Salisbury. Oh, and as you can see now, it is a 20. This used to be a 30, so it's gone down to 20. And let's see how the car deals with it. Now, straight away on double yellow lines, we've got a car parked. Is the car gonna try and go around it or is it gonna get stopped here? Yeah, it looks like it's gonna stop and it would have stopped behind that car there that is, you know, illegally parked, but well, that's a city for you. And I'm gonna turn it back on here. Now this is where it gets very tight and as you will probably see, the middle line has disappeared and this is just classic UK city, no lines on the roads in the city center. Uh, it thinks that there's a bus on our left, which is quite interesting but autopilot has actually said it will turn on. And it's, I think it's following this left line here and maybe slightly part of the red line. But straight away, we're gonna be coming behind this bus, which is just dropping people off at this bus stop. And I'm gonna have to squeeze past it. Well, I'll just wait actually, because this guy's going right here. I wanna do some more tests with bikes quite soon. So uh, if you're interested to see bike stuff, do let me know. Again, we're just gonna brake here probably because of this car. Whoa, left, right, left, right. It's gone in the middle here and it was trying to just go in the middle kind of of the whole road. But I think it's because this Safeway lorry is, oh, he was parked, but now he's moving again. So you can see what I mean though. The center of um, a city, as, as the others have shown us, is absolutely tragic when it comes to autopilot and anything self-driving. We've got someone walking in front there. Did the car pick him up? Didn't actually show him at all. So I don't think it did pick him up. Okay, is autopilot gonna work? No, there's no autopilot. We are picking up parking spaces though. We definitely are picking up some parking spaces, which is interesting, but autopilot doesn't wanna work uh, as of yet. There's so many people around. Oh, 
Okay, autopilot said it wanted to work there, but I tried it and obviously it didn't work, which is a shame. So when's it gonna work now? Well, those people just walked across the road and didn't even look. They did not even look. My gosh. Uh, I, ca I just can't get autopilot to turn on here, guys. Oh. We're gonna have to come down to the red light, but I just cannot get the autopilot turn on. But this will be interesting, because as you can see, there's a lot of people, and there's a lot of people on the screen. Actually, there's not, there's only like a few. It didn't pick up quite as many as there were there. And can we get autopilot down here? So this is all a one way, but as you can see, autopilot still doesn't want to work. It just doesn't want to, to turn on at all, actually. Um, Is it gonna work down here? It should work here. There we go, okay, right, we're on autopilot again. And now we're going straight through the center. So this is the heart of Salisbury. This is obviously probably the hardest bit for autonomy to work down. Now it sat quite far behind. I've got it set to, uh, it was set to three just then. So I've set it to one, but you can see it doesn't actually get any closer when you set it to one. So can you guys see out the rear view as well? Yeah, you can see the rear view. Just making sure everything's nice and clear. Okay, so let's see the car go now. It's picking up. And this is gonna be interesting to see if it decides to just follow the cars ahead because the lines are kind of, there aren't any. And then there's a mini in the middle of the road. It's, is it going around it? It's, whoa, okay, I'm still not doing this. So it went around that mini just then. And now it's going around, this isn't me, going around that Peugeot. I am, however, right now controlling the speed of the car, okay? Because there we go. So I'm just going to take it off now. So now it's doing it itself again. But again, because this is all a one way, it's not actually too bad because there's not people coming the other side. So it's working it all right, I guess. Again, not how I would drive it, but it's doing it. And it should turn here, but is it going to turn for us? No, it wasn't going to turn for us. And we've got to do the turning ourselves, but that's okay. And again here, we're turning a sharp left and the car won't do that just yet. We've got autopilot back on now, but again, there's no middle line, but I think because there's cars on the other side and a very obvious left line, it's not having any troubles. Okay, so that's actually the Navigate complete. That's where we wanted to go on Navigate uh, into the city center. So that is driving straight through the city center. And now we're gonna wrap around using the ring roads. So we're gonna be going on to some bigger roads here and seeing how these roads are built in the city and whether they're good for the car. What's it gonna do here? Very interesting. It's used the bus stop as the lane. So it's followed the bus stop lines and then it was going all the way out onto the right-hand side. But as, uh, as you'll see now, there was a car coming on the right and I had to take over. So this is the ring road now around Salisbury. Let's see how it deals with the ring road. There are roundabouts though at nearly every step. So we're obviously gonna have a lot of issues with having to take control ourselves, but I'm hoping that it will be able to do the majority of it okay. Well, this is quite nice. This is, this is very nice to be able to do. But again, we're coming up to a roundabout. I'm actually gonna ping it all the way down and see what it does here. No, it's not going to. So this actually, oh, this roundabout, ah, oh, I could have let it do it. I didn't realize this was its own lane. It probably wouldn't have done it, but you could have let it do that. Okay. Well, lucky we're not on the other side. The traffic's pretty bad. Now, navigate on autopilot, interestingly, isn't coming on. There's no navigate around these, which I kind of expected it to do, to be honest. So I've turned on now another destination just to see. No, navigate on autopilot is definitely not turning on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna slow down and just try and do a, a lane change here. No, that, that doesn't wanna do a lane change. It, even if I leave the stalk up, it just doesn't do anything. So it's definitely not navigate on autopilot through here at all. Car started to brake now, which is quite nice and early actually. 
and that's slowing down to actually a really good speed. I'm happy with that, how that did it there. Let's see how it's gonna do this then on this roundabout. We just wanna go left, so it might do it. It might follow the lines all the way left, but I'm not sure if it, no, it didn't, it didn't. It was going to, but then as soon as that car indicated to turn left, I took control, but the car didn't actually indicate, it didn't actually come left in the end, which is kind of annoying, but better to be safe than sorry. No issues then on the ring road. The ring road is fine for it. But here, for example, I do want to go right. So I do want to be in that right-hand lane. But as you can see, the car is not doing it. It just refuses to. So I'm going to let it do its thing and see if it picks a lane at the end here. I guess, no, we're just going to come to a stop. Yeah, we're coming to a stop behind all these cars here. So I'm going to take control myself and move myself over. And I think I'm even going into this right-hand lane here. Okay, that BMW just cut that guy up in front massively. <laughs> These roads look nicely lined and quite easy for the car to follow. You saw the car brake quite hard there because it, uh, a car cut across its line, but it didn't fully stop. And now the car's going past these and uh, going up the road itself. I've actually missed the turning for my route home. I've just realized Whoa, we were way too close there to that sign. So I had to pull off. Um, but yeah, this is basically that road that we did last time, just backwards. There we go, back on. Okay, we can turn left anyway in a minute to carry on with the route that we initially set. But with these roads, they're really good. Again, the right-hand side was just a little bit strange. The road on that side is a little bit strange, but coming out, it's not a problem. Coming out, it actually seems okay. It seems to be just like the entrance into Salisbury with the weird bus stops and bus lanes and bus whatevers. That really was a struggle for autopilot because the majority of people, the majority of humans driving, cut up those lines because they don't really care about it. So. So the car broke hard there. There's no one coming around the roundabout, so I'm just gonna let the car go over it. And none of these people are actually indicating, so I'm gonna let the car do what it wants. Whoa, yeah, not good. You can see there, it went too far. Like, it, it hugged the lines, so it just followed the lines way too much. Um, so sometimes, yeah. Oh, this is also a problem. Sorry, I'm talking a lot, I know. When a bike lane has that on the pavement, but if it doesn't have a double yellow or a line there, the car sometimes thinks that is the line it needs to follow. And you can obviously understand that that is pretty catastrophic when it does think that. Uh, but otherwise, it's been good. And actually, it's been pretty good this journey here in the city center of Salisbury. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Hit like on the video if you liked it. And where should I go to next? I've got a couple of ideas in mind, but let me know in the comments and like comments of places you want me to visit. Before I go, I just wanna say a huge shout out to the 23 people who bought Teslas through my referral code on this channel. Huge thank you, and that is an amazing, massive number to hit and achieve. Uh, and I'm really, really grateful for that. And if you wanna buy a Tesla supercharger, one of the mini Tesla superchargers through PayPal, you now can. I'm sorry it's taken so long for me to get that sorted, but it's now sorted and you can buy your um, mini supercharger using PayPal. All right, so thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, this cone might cause issues. God, it's like, a, it's like an inch away. It's really, really close. Um, yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Until next week, Autopilot Tour, uh, tomorrow is actually a cross-country video, and it's the drive I did here to Salisbury through some countryside roads. Really interesting. Make sure you give it a watch. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, drive safe.